Hello, my name is Andre. I'm a representative for Gerard Systems. Today we're going to show you in a few easy steps on how to change an arm the safest and most efficient way. And as you need to do is follow us in order. In order to complete this job, you will need four specific tools. One being a 19 millimeter metric, a 17 millimeter metric, cutters, and a, seven, a 19 millimeter socket, open socket, to complete this task. You will also need a couple of things to complete this task as well. One being a step ladder and or a scaffolding system. We will need this system to support the lead rail. That is the rail that extends out. With the arm being broken, this will want to droop down. At this time, we go to the side that we know that the arm is broken on, whether it be the right side or the left side. You have your ladder or scaffolding in position to support your lead rail once you bring your awning out. And when you're bringing your awning out, you have to be very, very careful because these arms are spring-loaded and we don't know how the break took place. So the best way to approach this would be to put your face away from the awning and start letting it gently out, supporting the lead rail because the, uh, the lead rail is going to want to droop down. Once you have it out, close to two and a half feet, stop the awning. Once you have brought the awning out to the correct position and you are still supporting the lead rail, you will grab your ladder or scaffolding or some type of support to gently put it underneath the lead rail to support it. If you don't support it, we risk the chance of an arm possibly puncturing the fabric if it hasn't already. And this is what we don't want to happen during this procedure. Once the awning is in position like this, you're able to go on to your next step. So after we've completed those steps and the awning is secured and it is in the correct position, what we need to do is we need to release the arm. The tension on the arm, as I told you earlier, is spring-loaded. Two stainless steel cables running through the arm. It could be broken at certain different positions, but these cables are normally intact. So what I tend to do is I get my cutters and I cut one of the cables, slowly working it. They are stainless steel, which makes it difficult to cut, but I slowly work my way through the cable, keeping my face away from the front of the awning or any parts that could move and I cut the cable. Once I cut the cable you're going to hear the arm release. Once it releases it will lay down on this object that is supporting it. Okay now that we have taken the tension off of the arm and cut the, the stainless steel cable and the lead rail is supported by either a ladder or a scaffolding system now we can undo our hardware which will be the 19 millimeter and the 17. Those are the two tools that you will need to complete this. With your 19, you will back off the 19 millimeter nut, just like this, and your 19 millimeter bolt. You will back these off completely until the arm the pivot of the arm releases itself and the hardware is still intact in the shoulder. You have taken the 19 millimeter hardware off of the shoulder. Now you will take one 17 millimeter nut off of the lead rail and back this nut all the way off. So at this time, we've released all the hardware, the nut and the bolt from the arm at the shoulder portion of the awning. And we've also released the 17 from the lead rail nut. So now the arm is free to flow out. And there you go, it flows right out and it's all secured and you don't have to worry about the spring tension or anything because you have released that earlier in the procedure. You, you, so you have followed all the procedures correctly to get you to this point. The arm has been the broken arm has been taken off the, the G2000 and now we're ready to reassemble the new arm on a table or the ground to reposition it back onto the awning.
<laughs> now you will have to use some of the existing hardware that was on the old damaged arm to retrofit it on the new existing arm which will replace that damaged arm. One being the lead rail connector. You will take it off your damaged arm and put it on your new arm. This will make the installation much more easier as you can see going through our procedure. And the way to do this is there's a pin with an E-clip. You pop the E-clip and pull the pin out and the piece, the lead rail connector, comes right off the old damaged arm. And you reposition it the same way as it was on the arm. This is how you will receive the new arm out of the box. Once you, you have the new arm out of the box and on a table or the ground you will take the lead rail connector from the old arm and, and make a note on how it was put on, slide it on to the new arm, slide your pin through it just like that and have your E-clip and E-clip the bottom of the pin. Just like that as well as your 19 millimeter bolt that you will have to put through right in that point of the pivot. Okay, prior to attach, reattaching our new completed arm, which we put the hardware on at the table, we are also gonna check our hardware in our shoulder and, and make sure it's intact prior to sliding the arm on. One is the bolt, it's 19 millimeter. We slide the bolt through the back channel, which has a channel on it. The next piece we put on the bolt is a square, is a tube, round tube, and you put it on the opposite side, inside of the shoulder. Next is a pivot adjustment piece, which we also slide on inside of the shoulder onto the 19 bolt. Next, you'll see a little aluminum box. It's shaped like a box. It slides right into the channel onto the shoulder. This is a critical part, so make sure that you do put it in place. Now we're gonna reattach the new arm where the old existing damaged arm was at. We, uh, we had the uh, lead rail propped up at the time we did this, but we're gonna go a different route so we could see how this is done, but you're still gonna have your lead rail propped up in position. We take the arm with the assemblies that we put on it. I position the arm inside of the channel up here so it's supported by the bottom of the box. I line up everything, the hardware, the one bolt we did, and I just push it right through, just like that. Now the arm is supported inside of the shoulder. I take the bolt that we, we did earlier and with all the hardware on it, and I just screw it on there, and it'll screw right on. That'll hold this portion of the arm in position. I take my other 19 nut I have, and attach it to the bolt that we put on the hardware earlier. At this time, we have attached the portion of the arm to the shoulder. And it's all complete. We just, we, ha we have snugged everything down. Nothing could go anywhere. What I do is, we got the lead rail that'll be positioned by a ladder or scaffolding. I take the plastic sheet off of the arm. I slide it off, keeping pressure on the front part of the arm because it's gonna wanna spring open. I slowly open up the arm and support it against the lead rail, but watch the fabric. Then slowly bring your arm out and all you have to do is have the lead rail support it, just like that. Now you want to take your 17 and slide it in to your hardware that is already connected onto the lead rail. So what I tend to do is I, I got it supported and I just rock it on like that and presto, we're good. Everything is intact and we're okay to tighten down all the hardware at this time. During this whole procedure that I've just went over with you, our main priority is your safety. Always remember that these arms are spring-loaded and to keep your face, eyes, and mouth, and head away from them 
during the time when you proceed to do this arm change as well as try to watch out for the fabric. If the fabric isn't torn during the course when the arm was damaged, try to keep that intact because you could tear through it if you reassemble it incorrectly. So our main, our main focus is, is safety when you do this arm change and try to follow the procedures that I went over with you. It sums it up real quick for you. We also have a manual that you should also refer back to to kind of get an idea of what you're looking at and what you need to complete this task. Once again, we thank you for your time. And uh, remember, we want to be safe during this whole procedure. So watch your safety, please. Thank you.